and welcome to Lex Education, the brand new podcast from comedian, author, star of Live at the Apollo, Mock the Week, Hypothetical and Roast Battle, Laura Lex, and her brother Ron. Hello, I'm Ron. In our brand new podcast adventure, science fan Ron tries to teach me, comedy queen Laura, enough science to pass a triple GCSE with limited success. Each week, Ron and I will focus on one of the different science topics, alternating between biology, chemistry and physics. Each episode will feature one lesson and one quiz. However, the twist is that even though you will just hear a jingle between the lesson and the quiz, we will have lived a whole week in the real world. That way we really see what's stuck in my brain. It's episode one, Ron. Yes, episode one. What are you doing? You're not even concentrating. This is this is the first fucking seconds of our brand new podcast, and you're not paying attention. I was correcting your spelling in this. Is that how you spell prokaryotes? Yep, and eukaryotes. Oh, I've spelt that wrong in all my notes. Anyway, hello, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) Start as we mean to go on. Uh, In this week's episode, we're starting with biology. Ron, your fave. Yeah, specifically molecular biology, which is what I studied at university. Um, we're, we're doing cells. We're doing the types of cells. We're doing the organelles that are inside the cells. We're doing the stuff that's inside the organelles. Yeah, the organelles are the little guys that deal with the cells. I, I, I think I struggled a little bit this week, but overall it's exciting. Um, now listen, we're a brand new podcast. We could not have got going without the help of Podspike. Lovely Dan and lovely Suji who work at Podspike have really helped us to launch this. The chances are you listening to this right now is a direct result of Podspike <laughs> telling us how to start a podcast. So yeah, if you are really in the podcasting world together. and you want a bit more help getting going, please contact Podspike because I cannot overemphasize how much they've helped us. Yeah, they really they really gathered all our shit and got it together for us. <laughs> Showed us how to present it. <laughs> we hope you enjoy this episode of uh, Lesson One and our first quiz. Uh, we'll give you all the socials at the end, but do get in touch as you're listening. You can tweet us, Instagram us, all of that stuff. But I think, Ron, we'll, we'll get into the lesson, shall we? Enjoy. So, Ron, what was your degree in? Uh, I studied biochemistry for one year and then actually got a bachelor's in molecular biology after I switched. Right. And you did that at UCL? I did, yes. I remember visiting you in your little student houses. Ron's 10 years younger than me, in case I'm patronising all the way through this podcast. My favourite story of you from school is is that music class where you and your friends had to sing A Whole New World and they didn't turn up, so you had to sing it by yourself in front of the whole class. And me and Noah, oh. just, he, he played chords on the piano and I just <laughs> solemnly sang A Whole New World, both parts. <laughs> Yeah, and I did. I even did the every day it's red letter. You know, like the little interjections. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I love you, Ron. So, if you in 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 as few words as you like, what do you think I studied? Oh, that's a mean question. Um, molecular biology. So, like. Small things. <laughs> Biology is is like um, alive things um, and living things and how they live and reproduce, maybe. Um, and molecules are very small. Yeah, what are molecules? They are. A molecule is like one... Like gubbit of something, like one. <laughs> I assume it's bigger than an atom, so I think an atom is the smallest thing ever. But a molecule is like no. It runs shaking his head already. Oh god, this is just like going to be this whole thing is going to be like being in the shit seat on QI permanently. But a, a molecule is a very small amount of something. One molecule would not fill you up if you were having one molecule of chips. You would still be hungry. I I mean, you're not wrong. I'll give you that. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, a lot of what you said was wrong. That specific bit wasn't wrong. Okay. Um, uh, this first episode should be a pretty good window into what I studied at university, though. Uh, big up AQA. Uh, I've got an AQA GCSE triple science syllabus. Nice. Um, that we're going to work through. It's about a 200-page PDF. Um, so that will take us as long as it takes us. Wait, not for this episode? No, no, no. I oh, think God. I... Oh, my God. My heart just fell out my bum then. I was like, I can't concentrate for that long. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. So where are we starting? So we are starting on cell structure. Okay. Um, so we're going we're gonna to be talking about how cells work and how they work together and reproduce and become different from each other. Because obviously, like, a skin cell is very different to, say, a nerve cell or something yeah, like that. Yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> in today, we're just going to talk about the different parts of a cell. Okay. And what they do and what they're like and how, how we feel about them. Okay. Oh my God, I already feel so nervous. Here's my nerves. One, um, I'm nervous that I'm just going to be so stupid. Two, I'm nervous that one, I'm going to be stupid. And then people are also going to realise that you're funnier than me and be like, why is she here at all? Um, okay. All right, cells, we can do this. Yeah. Um, so what's your definition of a cell? What do you think a cell is? Um... Because as, as we've heard, a molecule is the smallest <laughs> gubbit of something. So what, All right. what do you think So a, a cell, cell is? is like the smallest gubbit that makes up a thing. So like you are made of cells and they are like the building blocks of a you. Um, they have a cell wall that in plants is rigid but in animals is floopy. Um, they have a membrane. I feel like cell membrane is a word. Then in plant ones, they have all the green stuff, the chloroform, and then they have the little club, cl club nugget brain thing that makes the cell work. About 50%. You know? Okay, All I'll right. take that. It's um, been 20 years since I did my GCSEs, to be fair to me. Yeah, um, no, that, that is fair. That's a very long time. Um, so All right, subtle I, dig. <laughs> Rude. Um, in the syllabus, it defines... Uh, it says cells are the basic unit of all forms of life. That's what I said! They're like the building blocks of a U. Kind of, yeah. Um, it... Like Lego. So if you're if you're a Lego Millennium Falcon, a cell is one of the bricks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Google defines it as the smallest structural and functional unit of an organism, which is typically microscopic and consists of cytoplasm and a nucleus. Cytoplasm in a membrane, and nucleus. Which... That's what I meant by the brain of the thing. The nucleus. That's yes. what I meant by cell nugget. And cytoplasm, that's where they make the chloroform, isn't it? Uh, no. So, I mean, um, so my next question that I've got in my notes, I was going to say how many different parts of a cell can you name? You've already given me cell nugget or, or <laughs> nucleus. Um, membrane. Yeah. I, I mean, Insane I said in that, the membrane. You, yeah, Insane you, you in you the nodded. brain. Cell wall, something. Yeah, I said about wall. cell wall. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I'm giving you credit. This is me parroting back things you said. Oh, my God, you're like Dad when you're teaching. This is really, this is a terrible idea. Why are we doing this podcast? This is just going to be weeks and weeks and weeks of me being very on edge. Can you name any other bits? Don't use that low tone with me, like you're being very patient. We're only 11 minutes in. Um, what's, like, the main bit of it? Like, what's the... What what's the main juice in a cell? What's the flesh of a cell? That's the cytoplasm. That's the cytoplasm. Okay. Yeah. Cytoplasm. Uh, I mean, we'll we'll cover all of this later. Yeah. We're, obviously. We're going to talk about cells. I I was just interested. How many in... more parts are there? So I've got in my notes, um, like, um, so the so the syllabus kind of leads you on looking at cells from, um, you know, from a, a while away, and then we're going to zoom in and talk about. Here, this is cute. The the little bits inside a cell are called organelles because they're oh, like the organs cute. of a cell. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a little um, 
a little a cappella group from the 50s. Mm. And now, coming up, it's the organelles. Be my, be my, be my, be my little, baby. little baby. Yeah. Um, you can't really do singing bits in pod, Zoom podcasts, can you? That's not going to work. No. We'll, we'll see how it sounds. <laughs> um, so, I've got in my notes that cells are just prickly bags of goo. Okay. Um, like mum. <laughs> um, right, so the syllabus is going to teach us about three different types of cell. Okay. Um, gonna we're going to learn about notes. animal cells. Yep. Um, and we're going to learn about plant cells and we're going to learn about bacteria. Ooh, okay. Because I don't a want bacteria, you they're not animals. Uh, they're not animal cells. What are they then if they're not plants or animals? They're bacteria. Give yeah, a what's a bacteria? We'll, we'll cover it. <laughs> This is where science annoys me, because what is a bacteria? I just well, always about, thought it was I, like a little beetle, but I don't really no. understand what it is then. No. Um, well, we'll cover it. So, animal and plant cells, those are eukaryotes. There's two different types of cell. They're what now? Eukaryotes. Eukaryotes? Eukaryotes, yes. Um, those are the big ones. Um, so, the, the crucial defining thing of a eukaryote is that it has a nucleus. It's got it's got a cell nugget. It's got a cell nugget. Okay. Um, and that's like the brain of the cell. Ish. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, they've got a nucleus. All multicellular life you know, is eukaryotes. Okay. And so if you've got more than one cell in you, you're a eukaryote. Yes. Basically, anything you've ever seen is a eukaryote. I've seen bacteria. Probably not. Yeah, on microscopes where they like zoom in on the petri dish oh, and then they're sorry, all blobbing yeah. about and expanding. Everything you've ever seen with like your your eyes is a UK. <laughs> <laughs> what about like a lamp or something? Has is that made of cells? That's made of atoms. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is a We're... cell made of atoms? Yes, everything's made of atoms. Oh my God, this is where science is just stupid. We don't need to know this stuff, it's too small. What's the point? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get on to how small this stuff is in a bit, because I think that's going to really fuck you off. I hate uh, stuff like that. That, that. that is like, it's like space. I just hate space. I can't see the point in knowing anything about space. It's too far away. Who cares about it? And this, to me, sounds like that. Like, what does it matter? that If they're so tiny, you can't see them. Don't worry about them. They're not important. It's like so, vacuuming so, under the sofa. Why? You can't see it. Nobody's so going to come and visit your house and pick the sofa up to check. Yes, but you are made of a trillion cells. All oh, right, oh. I've put weight on. There's been a pandemic. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so a eukaryotic cell, anywhere um, from 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter. 10 so, to 100 micrometers? Yeah, so if they were 100 micrometers across, you could have 10 of them in a millimeter, or 100 to make a centimeter. That's too small. That's probably bigger than, I don't know, that, that surprised me. That was bigger than I thought they'd be. So my finger is 8 centimeters long. So let's let's assume that you've so that's like eight hundred just in one strip of my finger. Probably more because that's like the biggest ones. I reckon I've got big cells. I've got big pores. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and then um, so then the other type is prokaryotes. So prokaryote. Those, those are you are you eukaryote? No, I'm prokaryote. Is that helping, like, your learning? Yeah, I'm trying to give them characterizations to help me remember right. and learn. So at the moment, I'm like, the eukaryotes, they are... Um, well, hang on, let me find out a bit about prokaryotes and then I'll see. Sure, yeah. Because at um, the moment, prokaryote sounds a bit like proletariat. So I'm like, oh, these guys, they're... Yeah, fuck these guys. Yeah. No, Largely, I'm in support though. of these guys. I thought the proletariat were the, the, the bougie people that we No, hate. that's the bourgeois. Anyway, right. so prokaryotes, they are anywhere from 0.1 to 5 micrometers. In oh, diameter. that's much smaller. Yes. Okay, so anywhere yeah, these a, are the yeah. proletariats. These are the peasants yeah, of the cell the, world. I've got in my notes that they are the small boys. 
Small boys. Okay. Small boys. Prokaryotes are small boys. Yeah. Hello, um, we're and the these prokaryotes. Please don't step on us. Are always single-celled organisms. So when you say, like, what is a bacteria? Is it like a little beetle? No, it's because it's one cell that, that dillies about on its own. Oh, no wonder they're not getting anywhere because you've got to unionise if you're going to really start a revolution. Well, in a, in a, in a sense, they have unionised and they have gotten everywhere. So unions work. Yeah, join a union. So a plant, a plants and animals are eukaryotes and yes, bacteria exactly. is prokaryote. Yes. This is following... All right, so this makes sense now because plants and animals are giving it the big... Wah, 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 we're the best. And bacteria are the underdog. Uh, kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, they don't have a nucleus. No brains. I've got in my notes that the genetic material is just pissing around in the cytoplasm. So uh, if they don't have... They don't have a nucleus, and the nucleus is sort of the brain. Yes. Are they alive, bacteria? Yes, bacteria are alive. It's so viruses that you're like... thinking, well, it's iffy. No, I was not thinking that, but thank you for giving me that um, benefit of the doubt. <laughs> there wasn't a... I don't, I don't even know what a virus is. I thought... I, I have no idea. Anyway, so what... Uh, how does a bacteria know it's alive? Uh, well, I th I think back at GCSE they teach you Mrs. Gren. Yes. Um, which I can't remember. Movement, respiration. S is sensory perception. No. Growth, oh. reproduction. Right, it is apparently movement, respiration. Oh, you were right. Okay, sensitivity. Okay. Nutrition, reproduction, excretion, and growth. Excretion. Oh, these people do Mrs. Gurn. That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> Mrs. Gurn. But, but here's my question, though. I don't doubt that bacteria is alive. What I don't understand is how a bacteria knows it's alive enough to do anything about... Does it just... Does it have, like, gut instinct? <laughs> In a chemical way, yes. Okay. Um, so where the, the S there in, um, in Mrs. Gren, sensitivity, uh, bacteria will respond to chemical signals in their environment. Okay, and that's but just they, like a weird drive to be alive. No, they don't have a drive to be alive. Things on this scale, it's more just kind of like uh, robots that react to stimulus and, and multiply. Huh. Yeah, so they don't have a nucleus, but that doesn't mean that they don't have genetic information. Okay. Where's they that do, stored? As I say, pissing about in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm. That's just yeah. carrying all their code. Yep. There, there'll usually be, or almost, uh, there, there'll be a long loop of DNA that is anchored to the, um, to the outside of the cell somewhere. Um, and then there might be a couple of plasmids floating around as well. What's a plasmid now? A plasmid is just a small circle of DNA. I wrote my dissertation on plasmids, actually. Oh, and the uh, DNA it, is like the barcode. It's like, this is what this specific thing is. Um, it's more like recipes for things. Oh, I like this. Go on, tell me more. So, um, you'll, you'll often hear statistics about how much DNA is actually doing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, often I often hear those statistics. Can't walk down the fucking street without somebody <laughs> chatting away to me about whether the DNA is pulling its weight in what it's meant to be up to. Yeah, so DNA essentially is recipes for proteins. At, like at the the part of it that we really really understand, DNA is recipes for proteins. And then on either end of where you've got a recipe for a protein, there will be instructions on when and how to make it. So DNA is chicken recipes. Yes. Is like a meal planner for chicken. Proteins are kind of the Meccano of cells. I thought like, we were doing Lego. We can't mix mediums. Proteins, so hang on, the Lego blocks are made up of tiny Meccanos. There are Meccanos. Or may, it's, actually, it's a bit more Bionicle, but oh I think Bionicle's God. after Bionicles your time. Bionicles were after my time. I remember yeah. you faffing about with those, but they were very boring. Yeah, they're a bit more Bionicle. 
Um, but yeah, so the Lego bricks are made up. They have Meccano or Bionicle, depending on how old you are, inside them. <laughs> I'm stickle brick era. Can we talk about it in stickle bricks? Um, anyway, so we'll move on to the parts of a cell. Um, and the, well, I the thought other... we just did the parts of the cell. No, we haven't talked about organelles at all. Oh my god! How are they um, getting so much stuff in them when they're this small? Uh, very small organelles. Um, right. What so. am I think? What's that making me think of? I have trailed the world and seen its wonders From the organelles to the mountains of Peru But there's no place like London Do you know what that's from? I want to say Sweeney Todd. Yes, Ron! You get 50 points. <laughs> uh, parts of a cell, eukaryotes. What's listed in the syllabus for us to learn is nucleus, mitochondria, cytoplasm, the membrane, ribosomes, and then for plants specifically, chloroplasts, vacuoles, and cell walls. Those words are all ringing a bell, actually. These are the big hitters, all right, all right. as far as organelles go. Okay. I should have written them down, I say, shouldn't I? don't have organelles, but they can... Some of them have cell walls. And cell walls is what makes it rigid, so like a stem of a plant would have cell walls. All plant cells have cell walls, actually. I think I said that, actually. Yes, including the stem, so you can have 50 points too. Thank you. Right, so nucleus is the defining aspect of a eukaryotic cell, and it's basically the reason why eukaryotic cells are so successful. Okay. It allows us to be multicellular because it gives, it allows for protection of the DNA, and it also allows con- increased control over the DNA. So, as we were talking about earlier, DNA encodes for genes, which are recipes for proteins. Proteins, bionicles, slash Meccano of the cell. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And, as we were also talking about earlier, chemical messages are used to sort of signal these things, turn them on and off, say when you want to make stuff and when you don't want to make stuff. Mm -hmm. So, the nucleus, that is an envelope around the DNA, made of a membrane. We'll talk about membranes a lot later. They're my favourite bit. Um, That is a really creepy sentence. What's your favourite part? Membrane. Oh, where do you hear about membranes, though? Membranes are sick. Um, So... (laughs) (laughs) Ooh. Um, so DNA wrapped up in a membrane and if, and like I say so chemical mess- messengers are telling us when to make stuff and when not to make stuff so if you have this extra membrane around it you have another place where you can stop chemical messages from getting to the DNA and therefore increase the level of control on what you're making and what you're not okay that makes sense so you've put your DNA in a little bag instead of it flopping around like a in everything yeah, yeah. just getting in the way reacting to everything exactly how does the membrane know what to do more chemical messages um, basically so it would be are you basically saying there is a god no this is like this is proof of not no god is it yeah because it's so random and dumb oh. um yeah like might just be uh, a not very good god like a maybe. learner god Everything's just so convoluted um, and and laborious. Okay. All right. So instead of it just whipping about, it's it's in a pocket, and that makes it more sensitive. It's like putting a condom on. A, a condom with a little window at the end. So if you did want a baby, you could open it up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A Velux um, condom. And then I've also got my notes that it protects from things like genetic parasites, but I might not go into that with you right now because I feel like that might be a bit too much. No, the next one, cytoplasm. It's goo. Yeah. It's a slippery mess of proteins, fats, sugars, molecules, ions, water, and everything. Okay, yeah. Like the sort of, yeah, okay, I get you. It is the chemical environment that all the chemical messengers that make everything else happen are in, inside the cell. Okay. I'm imagining these cells are like, they're like hot tubs. So sometimes you get a hot tub that's all floopy. It's just like an inflatable one. 
Sometimes you get one with rigid walls. And then some of them just have like a snake in it. <laughs> some of them have a snake in a bag in them. <laughs> <laughs> now she's falling apart. And the cytoplasm is the water in the hot tub. Yes, cells <laughs> are like things that have stuff in them. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Okay, now um, then the next one that he wanted us to learn about was membranes. Membranes. And that Maybe. that is around the outside of the cell. Yes, and enclosed, and different things in the cells also have membranes. Oh, like the nucleus yeah, is has a membrane around it that's made mm-hmm. of the same stuff. Um, things like mitochondria, chloroplasts, those have membranes as well. Um, maybe the phrase plasma membrane what, rings a bell from... I think that was a type of gun on Descent. Do you remember that game? Yeah, number four. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> My attention is really dying. Okay, membranes? The current model of how membranes work is called the Fluid Mosaic. Fluid Mosaic. That's a lovely name for a band. Mm. Hi, I'm Laura Lex. Welcome to Wembley. This is Fluid Mosaic. Woo! We're quite influenced by Pink Floyd. It's called a Fluid Mosaic. <laughs> Because um, there's lots of different gubbins anchored to the membrane. How come uh, I'm not allowed to say gubbit, but you're allowed to say gubbins? I applauded you for the word gubbit. Thank you. It's a nice word. I it? used it several times after you did. Gubbit is the lead singer of Fluid Mosaic. Gubbit gubbins. <laughs> um, yeah, so different stuff anchored to the membrane. But the membrane is kind of a liquid, but only in one direction. No. Find a new way for that to be a fact, because that is nonsense. So <laughs> no, Ron, don't try and explain it. Just it can't you just be said that. Find another way. So basically, no, it's... don't say basically when it's not. You can't be liquid going in one direction like a stargate. That's insane. It's quite a lot like a stargate, actually. Is this my first good analogy? <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Might be. <laughs> Yeah, right. it's a lot like a stargate. It's kind of like um, it. It's things can float around, but kind of only in in two two D. As in, you know, on the plane of the membrane, things can float around really freely, but they can't leave the membrane. So move in the third direction. If you see what I mean, like a fly stuck on a spider's web. That's what I'm picturing now. Yes, if you like. Okay. So it's 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 kind of like something just floating around on the surface of water. Yeah, can, all right. Yeah, it can do whatever it wants on the surface, but maybe this thing can't go dive and it can't Oh, like a water off. boatman. Water boatman, yes. Okay. Perfect. A Stargate water boatman. <laughs> yeah. Now, Imagine if that... somebody actually managed to listen to this and learn anything. That'd be incredible, wouldn't it? So the way that membranes are made, and this, this is really cool. This is, this is why they're my favourite bit. So you know how oil and water don't mix? Yes, unless you whisk yeah. it. Unless you whisk it, but then even if you whisk it, they will separate again. Mm. So, like Brad um, and Jen, you think that they're gonna? Oh, oh, oh! No. Every time together. you whisk them, they separate again. <laughs> um, I would whisk Jennifer Aniston. I'd whisk her off and treat her nicely, like she deserves. Haven't they been broken up for like twenty years? Yes, yes, they have. Yeah, yeah. Yep. About when you were doing your Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, so membranes are made out of basically things that have oil on one end of it and then something that dissolves in water on the other end of it. Okay? Nope. <laughs> what? So they have a head that what? is... What? Membranes? Qualities. No, the molecules that make membranes. Oh, that's even smaller. I thought we'd done membranes. They were a pond, a flat pond. No, but this is really interesting, right? Oh, I don't believe you. <laughs> no, so they have... <laughs> Just shut up for a second. <laughs> they have a head on the molecule that can dissolve in water, 
right? <laughs> and then coming off that molecule, they have two little legs that are oil, essentially. They're oil molecules, lipids, fats. Okay? So when you release a bunch of these into... What are you looking at? What are you doing? I'm drawing a picture of what you're saying to remind me. (laughs) Fucking show me. (laughs) All right, here you go. That is the molecule. (laughs) He's got a little head. Get rid of the body, just keep the legs. You said it had a head. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying get rid of the body. So it's just a head and legs? Yes. Yeah. And then the water dissolves the head... Yep. And so, the legs are made of oil. Yep. And then, when you release a lot of these into an environment like uh, that is water-based, like the cytoplasm, mm-hmm. all of the heads will be on the outside, trying to dissolve in the water, and all of the legs go into the middle so that they can only react with oil, the other legs. And then, what you get is just a membrane of all of the inside bit is the legs, and then there's an outside layer of the heads that dissolves in the water. And it just happens because of the inherent properties of the molecule. And it organises into membranes. It's awesome. So did, did the, mem- so the membrane already existed? When? <laughs> Before all these little blokes turned up. So you had a membrane, and the membrane was water. And then all these guys came along and stuck their heads in the water and their little legs sticking out like little synchronised swimmers. And so there's all oil on the top and all their heads are underneath in the water. Who's in charge, the membrane or these molecules? The membranes... uh, The molecules make the membrane. No, you said the molecules went to the membrane. No, they are the membrane. The membrane is made of these molecules. Ah, oh, but so where wait, did wait, the wait, water come it... from? The water's in the cytoplasm and outside and everywhere. Wait, OK. <laughs> your, your little drawing that yeah. you've done there, yeah. just draw like a couple of them all standing in a line in, like that. Yeah. Do that and then you'll see a membrane. The membrane is the feet. It's the whole thing. It's the heads <laughs> and the feet. And, okay. And the two layers. Okay. And the water's just in the cytoplasm. The water's everywhere. Water, Life water everywhere. Water. Not any drop to drink. Cool, right? Mm-hmm. Membranes, for my uh, my uh, my reckoning, most important thing in the cell. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Reactions happen there. They separate stuff. They're semi-permeable. So, like, some things can get through, but other things can't. They're very, very cool. Okay. The next organelle that we're learning about is the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, This is, again, enclosed in a membrane. Um, They're kind of lozenge-shaped and then full of like a wrinkled membrane for more reactions to happen in. And this is where respiration happens in cells. You're frowning. Is is that all good? Um, So hang on. I've got a jelly bean. That's a mitochondria. And inside the jelly bean is a little baggy, and that's the breathing bit. Yes, it's kind of like someone stuck a blanket in a bag and that blanket respired. Okay, all right. Um, So, yeah, so respiration happens here. Uh, Oxygen plus energy sources, so like sugars and, and stuff like that, are turned into an energy currency called ATP. Automatic tectonic... Petrol. Adenosine triphosphate. Hmm, yeah. That's the Um, Latin name. Which is used all over the cell. All over the cell. So ATP is essentially... 20 pence less than a pound. Hey! (laughs) He hated that. Fuck, that made me so cross. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Ah, <laughs> tell you why it made me so cross, Laura, because I did two years of A-level biology and then I did three years of a fucking degree and no one ever said that. <laughs> um, yeah, ATP molecules are essentially like tiny one-off batteries that can power reactions or mechanisms in cells. Until I come. Do, do, do. 
Do you remember that song? That was ATB. So ribosomes, that's the next organelle that we're going to learn about. Uh, Ribosomes ribosomes. are just where we make proteins. Make the chicken factory. Why do you keep talking about chicken? (laughs) Because it's protein. (laughs) Oh, I let it slide the first time, but then you did it again. (laughs) I always just think of protein. I think of chicken. Everything's got protein in it. Yeah, especially chicken. It's the bionicle of the cell. Chicken's got loads of protein. Well, muscle in general just has lots of protein. Yeah, like a chicken. Chickens. (laughs) Um, A recipe is fed into the top of the ribosome and then it kind of shits out a protein at the bottom. So DNA goes in the ribosome. Not DNA, mRNA of vaccine fame. That stands for messenger RNA. Oh, yeah, okay. And then the messenger RNA is fed in kind of to the top of the ribosome and then a protein comes out the bottom. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, And then the other ones that they want you to learn about um, just for plants are chloroplasts. This is where the chlorophyll is and that's what makes plants green. That's where photosynthesis happens. Yeah, I remember Uh, that bit. Yeah, they're a lot like mitochondria chloroplasts um, and both chloroplasts and mitochondria are believed to have started out as bacteria that made their way into eukaryotic cells and then we were they, they formed a symbiotic relationship with the cells that they lived in and they're now organs inside the cell you right i didn't really understand what you said <laughs> Right, so there's a bacteria one day that was going around, and for some reason, this bacteria is just making, uh, doing absolute gangbusters making ATP, which is just a lovely molecule, right? Mm hmm. So then a big eukaryotic cell is trundling along, um, and then it's like, oh, it's quite nice living next to these bacteria that make these, make all the ATP. What if they lived inside us and made the ATP there? And we mm. could keep them, we could keep them safe. And then they could make us the ATP. And then they started kissing. Yeah. And the bacteria came to live inside happily forever and ever. (laughs) Exactly. So, all right. A kind of nice... So you could look at that two ways, really. You could either say that the the eukaryote is doing a protection racket of, hey, I'll make sure nothing bad happens to your son. Um, Or you can think about them as falling in love and being together forever and ever. I choose the latter. It's much nicer. It is It's nicer. kind of like if your liver was like a squirrel or something. And <laughs> <laughs> yep, go on. <laughs> um, and <laughs> the squirrel was just like around being nice. <laughs> so then <laughs> then See, you, analogies are not as easy as they but, look, are they? Uh, then you ate the squirrel, and then the squirrel <laughs> <laughs> lived inside you, processing toxins in your blood. <laughs> and and that is what that's like. Yep. It's a bit like that. <laughs> um, right, the other one that they want us to learn about um, with plants is vacuoles, which are essentially just big spaces in the middle of the cell that hold sap. 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 Yeah, so that's kind of uh, um, like where I thought we should get to with the syllabus at the moment. Okay. Um, there are, I would just shout out to my boys, the other organelles that weren't mentioned. We've got the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulums. They're good. Golgi apparatus. Looks yeah. like a stack of pancakes. Yeah, does have a gross name. Um Here's something that I thought was worth mentioning just because I I thought I think it's cool and I think it's crazy to think that all of your cells in your body and all eukaryotes have skeletons. No, what? They've all got skeletons. The cytoskeleton is a thing, gives them structure and strength and shape. Not made of bone, though. No, made of protein. <laughs> okay. But then there's... Uh, so... Um, the other uh, thing that I wanted to mention, vesicles in general, very cool. Basically, bags of membrane that they can use to transport stuff around a cell. Ooh, fun. Yeah. Um, made out of the same type of membrane um, as, as the cell membrane. But, right, so when they're traveling around inside the cell, they use the cytoskeleton to, the, the, the cell skeleton to, as kind of like roads 
to move stuff around on. Ooh, and there's okay. a protein that pulls the vesicles and it literally has like two little legs and it just walks down the cytoskeleton <laughs> and pulls stuff along, um, which is cool. Uh, what else? Lysosomes. Those are specialized vesicles that hold... Uh, vesicles is a stupid name. It just sounds like vehicles, but wrong. Yeah, and they're like little trucks taking stuff around the cell. It's, it's perfect. Lysosomes. Um, they are kind of like cellular suicide pills, but also kind of chemical bulldozers. So they kind of have like, it's kind of like the like the, the acid from Richie Rich. Mm. Um, they can just release it onto shit and uh, they, they, it breaks it down. Um, and then there's um, something called a centriole, which is like, it's kind of weird. It like helps organize when cells divide, but then it's also the basis of flagellum and cilia. A silly are the little wigglers that help you breathe. Yeah, so there's two types of wigglers. Um, cilia are just kind of like, uh, they're kind of the ones that look like hairs. And yeah. They just kind of all sway in a, yeah. in a motion. And then flagella are, um, they're basically like um, uh, propellers for bacteria. Oh. Yeah. And like, uh, I, was, I was talking to Judith about this last night. Um, Judith the, is Ron's girlfriend. They know. Um, <laughs> uh, the, 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 one of my favorite facts about what goes on inside um, proteins, there's a bacteria that has a protein that spins its flagella to motor it along. And that protein has gears. Ooh. Yeah. That's binoculars. Yeah, and I think that's lesson one. Okay, thank you, Ron. Well, fair listener, it is one week later and Ron and I have settled down to find out how much of that episode stayed in Laura's brain. I'm nervous. I've just been repeating to myself all week the word vacuole. So what we're going to do is, Ron, you've prepared a quiz. I have indeed. And you're going to quiz me. We're going to see if I learned. <laughs> Obviously, for the listener, this is slightly easier because you've just listened to this. But what we thought we'd do to make it a true test of learning is to wait a week and then and then try it. So, I mean, I'm nervous. Yeah, I mean, don't be too nervous. I think if, if you do badly, you know, that's a reflection on a bad teacher, not a yeah. bad student. So, oh, shit, I, like, I'm taking fault. it really personally as well. <laughs> um, okay, We might course, be too uh, sensitive to work together on something. <laughs> Okay, how many questions are there going to be? There's going to be five, but okay. it's not out of five because some of them are like, list as many as you can questions. <sighs> okay, all right, okay, let's go. Okay, question number one. Can you tell me the main differences between a eukaryote and a prokaryote? So a eukaryote has a nucleus and that means that the... Uh, DNA strands in it are not in a little membrane bag. No, they are. If you have a, if you have a, if you have a nucleus, they're in the little membrane bag. So that means the prokaryotes, their DNA is just wiggling about wild and can is therefore more sensitive. It can't be controlled. Yes, that's one difference. One point. Are there more? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, right. Laura edits out some thinking time. Um, some of them had like a symbiotic relationship. Millions of years ago, yes. Okay, okay. Um, um, no, it, I've, no, that's all so that, I remember. So they don't have a nucleus? Because they don't have any organelles, prokaryotes. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll make the quiz for episode two easier. No, um, no, no, I want to be challenged. If I've got to know this, I've got to know this. <laughs> as we all know, you've got to know this. <laughs> as much as I've got to do anything for my career, I've got to do this. Okay, how many structures can you name... From inside the cell, you've already named one, of course. Actually, two. So, 
Some cells have a cell wall. Yep. They all have a cell membrane. Yep. Um, there's the nucleus. There's the vacuole. Yep. yep. Um, there's chloroplasts. Yes. Um, there's f- flagellum. Yes. That do the little. They're the little. Um, the little wigglers. The little wigglers that help them move about. Um, what was the little printer called? There was something that the mRNA went into and then it pooped out chicken. Um, there was. I can't remember what that was, though. What was that called? Pfft, Brian? I mean, I'm just impressed you got mRNA. Thank you. Good. No points for that, though. Oh, uh, that's the same. Ribosome. Ribosome. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. I'm happy with that, though. That's not bad retention. Yeah, six. Six. Not bad. I've got seven points in total now. Okay. Um, so, um, based off something you said earlier, which two of the organelles may have arisen via symbiosis? The ribosome, I think, might have. Um, mm, no. Oh, that's a bad noise. Okay. Um, then I don't know. I thought it was the chicken pooper. No, no something about making to... something. It was a guy that came and sat in him and made something else. Made proteins. Something made pro. No, I don't know. I don't know. No, it was the mitochondria. Made and ATP. The made ATP. Yes. <sighs> yes, indeed. Oh, skip to question five as you've brought it up. What's ATP? A chemical? That? <laughs> that makes protein? No, not everything makes protein, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Only one thing makes protein. We already said there was the ribosome. Oh, ATP... Um, all I can think is my brilliant joke I made about it. ATP, um, I I know it had an effect that things liked, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, it's the energy currency of the cell. Ah, yeah, okay. Remember the tiny little... An ATM. An ATM is where you get money, an ATP is where you get energy currency. Yes. Currency. There's a, that's synergy. Um, all right, last question. Um, can you briefly describe how membranes are held together? Oh, I can describe it in so much detail. Yes. So, you've got little men. The little men like having their heads under the water and they've got leather trousers on that can't get wet. So, all the little men band together and put their heads in some water and then all their little leather trousers are sticking out the other end and then that makes a stargate i see you waving your hands at me it's just as a podcast run yeah that's what i said they stick their heads together and and then all their little trousers are sticking out the other end and then you've got a little wet head pool in the middle. It's like an Oreo of wet heads in the middle and leather trousers sticking out the other end. Yeah, that's the bit I wanted you to say, that there's two layers, so the legs are contained. Yeah, a membrane inside. is basically yeah, an yeah, Oreo yeah. where the middle is water and the outside is oil. It's a Stargate Oreo <laughs> made of <laughs> tiny men wearing leather trousers. Yes, yes. Perfect. Well, that's eight out of... However many. You should... Pretty how good. many were possible, just for people? Because I know if I was listening at home and had got them all right, I'd want to know if I'd got them all right. So do you want to run through the answers quickly? Okay, so the main differences between the eukaryote, um, you got one, which was the nucleus. Yeah. Um, and then multicellular, unicellular, that's another one. Um, size difference, organelles... Uh, those are the main differences. Okay, for the cool. So you get a point for each of those. So how many was that? Four, uh, four possible four. points there. Okay, four in total. Uh, um, then for parts of a cell, um, 
Nucleus, mitochondria, cytoplasm, membrane, ribosomes, chloroplasts, vacuoles, cell wall. That's eight. And then we've also got rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, vesicles in general, the cytoskeleton, lysosome, centriole, flagella, and cilia, uh, which I think is lot. another another nine. Oof. So 17, 17 parts available of a cell. there. I only got six. That's bad times. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one for them, and then just, just oh, and then two possible for the th- third question. What were the answers there, just so people can mark up? Oh, home? mitochondria and chloroplast. Yep. Um, how are membranes held together? I mean, point for that. If yep. you got the got the legs in the center and then ATP energy currency of the cell I'd also accepted adenosine triphosphate because that's the chemical name all right um, one point for that at two points if you said both of those things two, two points. points for that so that brings us to a total of three four five nine 26 possible points so let us know how you got on with the quiz there. You can let us know on social media. Obviously, we're a brand new podcast. We're just trying to get this off the ground. So if you've enjoyed listening, hey, give episode two a try. See if we're your new best friends in your ears. Um, Ron, let me know if I'm wrong about anything. I'm not qualified to do this. Oh, yeah. Have a chat with Ron. Um, don't tell me if I'm Ron. Uh, Ron? Don't. Do tell me if I'm not wrong. I'm not. Um, but please don't tell me what I got wrong. I'm very sensitive. Uh, you can like and subscribe the podcast. We would very much appreciate um, getting going with a bang. Tell people that you liked it. Say, hey, oh, that's this new cool podcast I just listened to. It's sexy. Um, it's not sexy. It's brother and sister learning science. It's the least sexy no. podcast. You can tweet us. We are at Lex Education. We are at Lex Education on Instagram as well. And should you want to correct Ron or tell me I'm brilliant, you can also email us lexeducation at gmail.com. Ron, thank you for teaching me. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Class dismissed. (laughs) I thought that could be a catchphrase. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) 